Hello, this is Professor Kitch. Welcome to this webcast on Section 9.6, which covers computation of induced stresses. When you finish this module, you should be able to describe and give examples of several types and sources of induced stresses common in geotechnical engineering. You should also be able to compute induced stress using fundamental equations, chart solutions, and computer programs or spreadsheets. As we've discussed in earlier sections, Induced stresses are caused by the application of loads on the ground surface. The sources of these loads can include foundations, water tanks, or passing vehicles, to name just a few. This photo illustrates a number of sources of induced stresses. The truck applies four point loads to the ground surface, one at each tire location. The railroad embankment applies an infinitely long distributed load that is a combination of a triangular and rectangular load. Under the retaining wall there is a continuous footing which applies a long narrow rectangular load just below the ground surface. If the building highlighted in yellow is founded on a mat foundation it applies a load distributed over a large rectangular area. All of these sources induce loads below the ground surface that can be important in geotechnical engineering. We most commonly use the Boussinesq theory to compute induced stresses. This theory is based on elastic theory and includes the following general assumptions. The soil is represented by an infinite half space and is elastic, homogeneous, and isotropic. Because the soil is a continuum within the half space, a load at the, point, at the point P shown will induce stresses a significant distance away from that point as shown here. The stresses are not merely transmitted below the footing but also spread out laterally. The point load shown induces not only vertical normal stress delta sigma z at a point but also horizontal normal stress and shear stresses as shown here. The equations given here can be used to compute the induced stresses at any given point in the half space due to the applied point load. Your text contains equations for other induced shear stresses and normal stresses due to the applied point load. This solution is named after Joseph Boussinesq, a French mathematician who solved this problem back in 1885. Boussinesq's basic solution for a point load has been integrated over many shapes to produce solutions for other surface loads. For example, if we integrate the point load solution infinitely in one direction, we have the solution for a line load applied to the ground surface as shown here. And for a point A located x of f to the side and x of z below the line load, the induced stress delta sigma z is given by this equation. We can also integrate the Boussinesq point load solution over an area to determine stresses induced by a load applied over a finite sized area. When we compute induced stresses due to applied surface stresses, we generally formulate the solution as delta sigma z is equal to I sub sigma times the applied surface stress Q, where I sub sigma is called the stress influence factor. The solution shown will compute the induced vertical stress beneath the corner of a rectangular loaded area, and the equations can be used to compute the stress influence factor. While these equations are not particularly complicated, they are tedious to use unless they are programmed into a spreadsheet or on a computer program. Fortunately, there are simpler forms of the Boussinesq solution that we can use for quick computation. There are three basic forms of Boussinesq solutions for stress distribution. The first form, which we've already seen, consists of equations for point loads, line loads, and various shaped area loads such as circles, squares, and rectangles. These equations are very useful for programming into spreadsheets and programs, but rather tedious to use for simple hand calculations. We also have chart solutions, which are graphical representations of the equations already presented. These are fast and easy to use, but are available for only a limited number of loading conditions. And finally, there are approximate solutions, which are simplified versions of the basic Boussinesq equations and are easy to use. However, like chart solutions, these are limited to just a few loading conditions. Here's an example of one chart solution for the Boussinesq stress distribution. In this case, it's for a square loaded area 
of width b. The solution is formulated as delta sigma z equal to i sub sigma times the applied surface stress q as we introduced earlier. As shown by this chart, this particular solution can be used to compute the induced vertical stress for any point that lies on a vertical plane which bisects the square loaded area. It can be used to compute the induced stress both underneath the loaded area and outside of the loaded area. However, it can't be used to compute the induced stresses near the corner of the loaded area or at a point that's not along the center line of the loaded area. The chart uses dimensionless parameters x sub f over b and z sub f over b so that it's applicable for a square loaded area of any size. As an example, let's assume we have a square loaded area 3 meters on a side and want to know the induced vertical normal stress at a point A which is 1.2 meters off the side and 2.4 meters below the loaded area. The dimensionless location of point A is xf over b equal to 1.2 divided by 3 or 0 0.4. On the chart, an xf over b of 0 0.4 is represented by this red line. The dimensionless depth of the point A is zf over b which is equal to 2.4 divided by 3 or 0 0.8. The depth is represented by the blue line on this chart. The location where these two lines intersect is the location of point A on our dimensionless chart. The bulb shaped contours on the chart, often called stress bulbs, each represent a contour of constant induced stress or are lines of constant values of the influence factor I sub sigma. We see that our point of interest is located about midway between the I sub sigma lines equal to 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. So we will estimate for this problem that I sub sigma is equal to 0 0.35 and delta sigma z would be 0 0.35 times the applied surface stress Q. There are chart solutions for other loading conditions. This particular chart is for an infinitely long strip load that might be a good model for a continuous footing. This solution uses the same formulation and parameters as the previous solution for a square area but note that the stress bulbs plotted are very different. This chart is for the induced vertical normal stress under the corner of a rectangular loaded area. It uses the same formulation as the previous charts, but the parameters are slightly different. M is equal to the rectangle width B divided by Z sub F, and N is equal to the rectangle length L divided by Z sub F. The solution you get for this chart will be the same as that you get using these equations shown earlier. In fact, the chart is really just a plot of these equations. While the chart solutions are quick and handy, sometimes it's convenient to have an equation to use. But we prefer one that's simpler and easier to use than those we previously presented. For these situations, we have several approximate solutions. These solutions use the same influence factor formulation that we've used before, where delta sigma z is equal to i sub sigma times q. If we want simpler equations, we'll have to give something up, so these solutions are limited to just a few loading conditions. This equation, for example, gives the influence factor for the vertically induced normal stress directly under the center of a square loaded area. As you see, it's pretty simple. Note that this solution is limited to only those points directly under the center of the loaded area. Recall that our chart solution was applicable to any point along the plane bisecting the square area and could be used under the loaded area or outside the loaded area. This solution is much more limited, but is still very valuable. The next solution is applicable under the center of an infinite strip load. And this final solution is applicable under the center of a rectangular loaded area. Note that this is different and much simpler than our previous equation for points lying under the corner of the loaded area. The approximate solutions are easy to program into a spreadsheet or a programmable calculator and therefore are very handy. So let's summarize. The Boussinesq stress distribution is the most common way to compute induced stresses and assumes we have a homogeneous isotropic elastic half space. 
The solution comes in three different forms, exact equations, charts, and approximate equations. Each solution is for a specific locus of points and a specific loading condition, so you must be careful to use the correct solution. For area loads, where there is an applied surface stress Q, we generally compute the stress distribution factor I sub sigma using dimensionless parameters to represent the location where we want to know the induced stress, and then compute the induced stress as the influence factor times the applied surface load Q. So here's a quick practice problem that you can use to compare the chart method to the approximate method. Do this before class. That's all for this webcast.